Right. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to our new Dynamics lecture. Today, we will be talking about 3D kinematics. And I have been, I have been receiving some emails and some blackboard posts about our last lecture recording, which was not, we didn't have any audio recorded. So, I have uploaded one lecture from previous year. I hope you will find it useful. What, what I just said, I made an announcement just now, and what was it about? Right, so you will be able to listen to our recording, okay? So I made an announcement, anyone heard about this? Okay, please check the, please check the recording. So today we continue with 3D kinematics and as you know, we already finished vibrations, and last time we were talking about 3D, sorry, two degree of freedom systems, vibrations, and today now, we are going for our second topic, 3D kinematics. And probably, it is better to start with our intended learning outcomes, Guys, please make sure that you are joining on time and please make sure that you are listening when the lecture starts because again, it takes time to uh, get started and we need to leave at just 50 past three because again, we need to give some time for other people to settle. So, intended learning outcomes. So what we intend in Dynamics Unit is just we are trying to make sure that you are putting something, constructing some extra information uh, on what you know from uh, 2D or particle dynamics from kinetics, uh, from mechanics lecture last year. So we will be talking about kinematics of a body subjected to ro rotation about a fixed point. So fixed point rotation is one of the important concepts that we will be talking about. So today we will be talking about uh, rotation about a fixed point. Later on, we will be talking about general motion. And then finally, we will be talking about relative motion. I think probably in kinematics part, uh, the relative motion concept is generally the one we have a bit difficulty for uh, grasping. So hopefully, we will be solving several questions which will help you to understand the concept better, I hope. So, I made sure that uh, the sound is on and everything, so something happened in our last lecture, uh, so it didn't have any uh, audio, unfortunately. Probably the, the person before me last week just muted, so there is no, no sound. So this was the announcement that I made. <coughs> Instead, so there is no way that I would be able to give you the sound for last week's lecture. Instead, uh, I uploaded the similar lecture from last year, which is covering the same subject and going through the same solution for the same question. Anyway, I uploaded that before the lecture today, so hopefully this will be available probably between today or later, uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I think it is going through some checks before going to the system anyway. So yeah, and also you are going to have your first online assessment available to you this week, Thursday, 6 p.m. And then you will have two weeks to complete. Okay? You will have unlimited attempts 
you can start again, over and over again, uh, and your best attempt uh, will be graded. Uh, if you have some extra uh, extensions to deadlines, they will be taken into account. Normally, as I said, you have two weeks to submit, and I would release the marks immediately, but since I have to wait for uh, extra deadlines, additional deadlines, I am not able to release the marks in two weeks. So whenever I will be able, because again, uh, this is not a big issue, so I will just release when uh, I will get okay from the department. So do you get to see how the I don't think you will be, because again, if you are not feeling, if you feel that you know, something was wrong, you can attempt again, but it will not show you what is your mark, then you would continue. What should you? Revise. I mean, whatever we covered, I think, in the lectures, it would be good to revise, and also I think tutorials probably would be helpful again to go through on the subject. And the only topics that uh, will be assessed in online assessment plan is on vibrations. So nothing from today's lecture, but it doesn't mean that you don't need to give any attention today, okay, for the second uh, online assessment. Uh, kinematics and kinetics will be assessed. Right, uh, and for the newcomers, again, there was a, a problem with the video, please stop emailing me. I received a lot of emails about this. So I have uploaded a video which will be available latest tomorrow probably. Uh, so yeah, now we can continue. As I said, we are talking about kinematics today and our intended learning outcomes basically just construct something over what you had learned in uh, mechanics unit. So 2D kinematics will be very useful here. Whenever you have problem or whenever I feel that you may have some problem uh, understanding in some concepts, I will make sure that you know, I am revising again uh, the necessary background. Whenever I will not be able to give you the whole lectures about some previous concepts, I am going to upload some recorded videos on the concepts and I will let you know. One example, dot and cross products, uh, which are very essential uh, for dynamics unit. So sometimes you may need to revise that. So I will try to cover this in lectures. If I cannot, then I'm going to upload a video to the respective week folder to make sure that you receive the required background to proceed. Right. I mean, this is my uh, traditional question, kind of, uh, for couple victims in general. So I'm trying to pick maybe from the newcomers, but it will be difficult now. Right. So, what is kinematics? What is kinetics? What is the difference? It is very important to know before we start. So. I'm sorry, I will pick someone. Uh, or maybe I can give responsibility to you. Can you please pick someone? Can I pick someone? Yeah, please. Of course. That person just walking in down the stairs. The one with the water bottle? Yeah. Right, hi, welcome. So, thank you. We have a question. What is kinematics? You are here to learn. Okay, can you pick someone else? Can you pick someone else? Can you? This guy, yeah. What is kinematics? Thank you. That one? Kinematics. You are not sure? The, the motion of a rigid body you are analyzing. Correct. Thank you. So it is it is the motion of the rigid body, but this time we are just interested about the geometry of the motion. So we are trying to find the uh, position, velocity, and acceleration of the rigid bodies and some points on the rigid bodies. So we are not really interested about 
what is causing that motion, uh, that velocity, that acceleration. So we are not interested about the force. We are just trying to analyze the geometry. But in, when we will start in kinetics, then we will be, uh, we will be talking about, OK, this is the motion, but which force? causing which moment causing this uh, motion. So we will be interested about this in kinetics, but later on. So now, for three weeks, we will be talking about kinetics only. And rotation about a fixed point is one of the uh, key concepts. Because I will show you a couple of videos now, and I will ask you to uh, locate, identify the rotations around a fixed point. Because although it is one of the simple concepts that we can study, it still has a lot of industrial applications. And obviously, if a, if a robot arm doing a rotation about a fixed point, as an example, you are the one who needs to control that robot arm, robotic arms, right? So in order to control, you need to know what kind of motion it will make and what will be the positions, velocities, and accelerations. We are going to talk a bit shortly a bit more about uh, the examples. But first, you already know now that you know, we have two main textbooks that we are using. They are uh, really great ones. So normally, core textbook is Hibbler's textbook, but also, Miriam and Craig's textbook is also a great one, so it is really important. Please try to get at least one textbook on your desk and as a reference. Whenever it doesn't make sense what I'm telling or my lecture notes, you feel maybe like you know, it is missing some component, important, and it, you cannot understand what I'm trying to tell you, please refer to the textbooks, okay? And obviously, you can ask questions, but still, uh, on your own time, you are studying and you need some no, information immediately, so have a textbook. Right. Uh, I think it is quite obvious what we are talking about. We have a fixed point somewhere here. We have a rigid body. This is like, you know, uh, a random shape. So we are trying to show with the random shape that the theory that we will, we will be talking about is not just for some specific shapes. It is not just for a circle. It is not just for a rectangle. Or it is not for a cube, right? So we are giving you the uh, random shape to indicate that the theory that we are, that we'll be talking about is applicable to all different types of rigid bodies, right? It doesn't have to have a specific shape. So we have a fixed point here and the rigid body rotating about that point. So whenever we will be talking about a specific point like P on that rigid body, it doesn't matter like, you know, which motion you give uh, the rigid body, still the R, the position vector will be the same. So it doesn't matter about which motion it is doing, all lines, all uh, trajectories will be on a sphere. So first, I think uh, we can watch a couple of videos, or we can start with our uh, activity today. So I invested some money on balloons. So can you please pick one as a couple, and then up, and then please blow it and tie. Maybe you can also take one as a couple and then you can use up. I mean, I don't expect everyone to have one balloon, so you can have a couple, okay? Maybe you can share with them and then you can. Can you give me one as well?
Thank you. So here it is obvious that we are talking about rotational displacement. While you are distributing the balloons, please try to watch the videos and try to analyze what type of motions we are having around fixed points. This is I3, the MWI3 composite frame. Just try to see what kind of motions we have. Rotation about a fixed point. I will not take it now. I will come back. A similar one, another one. I am giving examples from composite materials because it is my main research area. Please try to observe the motions around a fixed point. Right, health and safety first, okay? Be careful with the balloons. And we need to recycle them after. Sustainability, important. Right, so I hope you were able to observe the rotations about fixed points. So why, why I gave you the balloons? Because you can see here what we are talking about. The path of motion for the particle lies on the balloon or rigid body. Actually, it lies on the surface of the sphere. It doesn't matter about the rotation. As soon as the point is fixed, you can give it any rotation you want. And still, you will see that actually the point lies on the sphere. Because again, the R, the position vector from fixed point, to the point B, P, for example, it will be always the same. And keep the balloons, because soon we will be talking about Euler's theorem. Anyone missing any balloon? No? Right. You want? OK. You can also share. Right. So we know Euler's from different uh, lectures, maybe from physics we know, from dynamics we know, from maybe mathematics, right? We know because they were kind of polymaths, like you know, they were really working in different fields. But in, in dynamics unit, what he told was, if you are, if a rigid body has different angular rotations more than one you couldn't keep the balloon you say physics Newton's third one I think 
right? So, demonstrated. Very well. So, if a rigid body has more than one component of angular rotations, you can combine them into one. So, your balloon or any rigid body, if it has, say, two different angular velocities, you can combine them and you can represent the rotation of the rigid body with only one component. This is what Euler tells us, but there are some uh, conditions for us to consider this as true. For example, the first thing that we have to look at, the rotations must be infinitesimally small. So if rotations are finite, then we are not able to use in dynamics lecture the Euler's theorem. Why? For example, you can see here two different scenarios. So in the first one, you can probably you will be able to identify the uh, rows here, like no. Do, do you see this line size here? On this face here. So if you give that cube first a 90 degree about Z axis, then these lines will be at the back side of that X plane or X Y plane. And after that, if you give another 90 degree rotation theta 2, then your lines will be on top of that face will be up now in the Z plane. In the second case, our lines again here, but this time we give the rotation theta 2 first about the Y axis and then we are giving the theta 1 as a second step and look now where our lines are. So in first case it was positive Z plane and here negative X plane. So it means that what Euler told us, if you have two different rotations, you can combine them as one and you will get the same rotation at the end. Right? Here we combine two rotations, we get one result, we combine again them, but in a different order, this time we got a completely different rotation of the rigid body. adding them together. Vectorially we will do this for uh, small rotations. I'm just coming there, right? So it means... So I mean, what, what, what we mean here, imagine again, as I said earlier, if you have two different, two separate rotations, you can add them and then they will give you all the time the same answer or same summation. Your 3D rigid body will be always uh, at the position where the summation of the rotations gives you. So here, what we are doing, we are combining, we are adding the rotations one after another. In this case, so we have 90 degree, right? Around Z. And as a second step, if we give a rotation around Y axis, we have a completely different result when we change the uh, order of rotations. So this means Euler's theorem is not applicable if you have finite rotations like 90 degree, for example. But if we have infinitesimally small, very small differential rotations, then in this case you can see, this is the uh, proof actually, in this case you can see it doesn't matter in which order you apply the rotations, the end result will be the same. Here for example, our rigid body sphere has two rotations, d theta 1 and d theta 2, and According to Euler, we can sum them together and we can show that d theta represents the summation of two separate 
individual rotations. And according to, again, Euler's rule, it doesn't matter in which order you apply d theta 1 and d theta 2. And this is, again, the proof of the concept, because when you are applying uh, differential displacements, differential rotations to the rigid body, here you can see this is, again, this length here, one side of our parallel program, gives us d theta 1 cross product r, and the other line, d theta 2 cross product r again. So irrespective of the order of application, you will always get the sum of the angles as a rotation of the body. Right, so I kind of feel that here, for example, as I mentioned earlier, the cross product is probably essential to grasp the proof of the concept. So what do you get when I say cross product? Anyone, could you please tell me like, you know, what is different, what is dot product, what is cross product? And the sense of that vector is the sense of the cross product is so you are crossing two vectors. Yes, yes, you are. And the third one, sense, sense of third one is perpendicular to them, right? So this is quite important. And in any case, I'm going to upload a video uh, on dot products and cross products on the week five folder. So please check what we mean by cross products. And when you will understand the cross products, you will be able to see why d theta 1 cross product r equal to this line. Because again, you need to use for the cross products right hand rule. Bless you. So you may not remember at the moment, but this is a quite simple uh, concept and quite useful concept to know about the right hand rule. You need to curl your fingers from one vec the first vector to second one, and your thumb will be showing you the positive sense of the cross product. This is, I think, quite important, and I'm leaving you the, to check the proof. If it still doesn't make sense, you can let me know, and I will try to explain further. Yeah, this is still, uh, part of the proof. This shows you that it doesn't matter in which order you are applying, you get the same d theta as the sum of the rotations. Now, you see? Maybe it was a mistake to give you balloons, guys. <laughs> We talked about the rotations, but they are rotational motion, right? We are talking about rotation now at the moment. So we are now quite clear about the position vector, right, R. Once you decide, once you identify the position, the next step in kinematics analysis is, as you know, it is velocity, right? But obviously this time we are talking about rotational velocity or angular velocity, which we normally show with omega. So omega is simply the time derivative of the d theta, which is angular rotation. As you know, we use different notations, so theta dot, one dot only, gives us the angular velocity, 
So please don't get, don't get confused if you see omega or theta dot. Angular velocity, the line of action of angular velocity is coincident with the rotation. And we call it instantaneous axis of rotation. This is another part that I would like you to check our core textbook, please. Uh, I cannot remember the section name now, but we have a quite detailed section about instantaneous center of rotation. So this will be quite useful. Probably like you, know, you already know about that, but if you feel that you, know, you need to revise, please do so. Our core textbook is available, and you can make a quick search how to find the relevant topic. And because of the concept that we discussed earlier, if someone asks you the angular velocity of a rigid body, you know that it is simply the summation, the addition of different angular velocities of the system. This is the easiest part. And if you will have any question like this at some point, if you will get to calculate the angular velocity, you will secure some marks already. Uh, but the usually a bit one step more kind of complicated part is about calculating the angular acceleration. Okay? I agree this is a bit a bit kind of more complex than finding the angular velocity, but I'm going to next week as well, I'm going to introduce you some techniques which will be quite useful and which will make sure that you will avoid simple mistakes by following some simple rules. Right, so this is the easiest part so far. As I said now, we are talking about the angular acceleration. Since now we have angular velocity, as you can see, guys, this is bold, bold character. What does it mean? It's bold. That means it's a vector. Vector, correct. Thank you. So, if this is a vector, what does it mean? It has a magnitude. It also has a sense or direction, right? So, one taking the time derivative of omega means that you have to take into account the change in the magnitude. Also, you need to take into account the change in the direction. This is why calculating acceleration is slightly complicated. But, for example, you are given a question and it says that omega is constant. If omega is constant, it means that the magnitude will not change by time. So it makes life much easier for you because you just need to calculate the change in the direction only. Right? So this is why, again, it is very important to read what is given to you in the question. So you need to catch the tips all the time. Because, again, if you catch it initially before you attempt solution, it will save you a lot of time. Right, yeah, you have to take into account change in direction and magnitude. And there are two different cones that is defining the motion. One is, we call it space cone, and one is the body cone. Body cone is when you observe the motion on the rotating body, it will make a cone, which we call it body cone, and in the absolute manner, the body also, or the instantaneous rotation axis, makes another cone in the space, we call it space cone. Very complex, very complicated, it is difficult to understand completely agree, 
but in the next slide, you, it will make more sense what is a space cone, what is a body cone. This example, it makes it very, very, I think, uh, easier than previous general case. So here you can see, this is a kind of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this is kind of a gyroscope. <coughs> It is processing around Z axis. <clears throat> so we have a disc here. It is rotating with omega S. And as I said, it is also processing about the Z axis. So you can see, if you are talking about angular velocity and acceleration of the disc, then it means that we have already two angular velocities for the disk, right? Because the disk rotating itself as a, with omega s, but also it is rotating with omega z. So what would be the total angular velocity of the disk? S plus p. As simple as this, okay? This is quite a simple thing. So. Now, let's see what we mean by body cone and space cone. So once the disk is spinning, as you can see, we have an instantaneous axis of rotation. As we talked earlier, please check what does it mean. It may be section 17, 12.7, if I'm not wrong. So please check. So this instantaneous axis of rotation, if you observe it from the body, you will see that it is making this body call if you are observing the motion of this axis from the body it will be it will give you the sense that you are observing the body cone but it also the axis will also be rotating because we have omega p right rotating rotation angle based on this angle the instantaneous axis of rotation will also create the space cone I will try to uh, get away more from geometrical definition. If it makes sense to you, it will make life easier for you when you are attempting sol uh, when you are solving some questions. But if it is getting a bit like difficult, don't worry too much about that because this may not significantly affect your solutions. Okay? But if you understand it correctly, it may make life a bit easier when you are solving the solutions. I will just try to explain why. Because it may prevent you making some sense mistakes, uh, sign mistakes for the solution. Right. We don't have a problem with calculating the uh, total angular velocity. And as you could see, omega, the magnitude is omega, is if it is constant. Then, what we are looking at now? Magnitude is constant. So if we are looking at the acceleration, magnitude change is zero. So what to, what to check? You are checking the change in direction, right? Because of that, our sense of acceleration is perpendicular to omega. As you can see, Omega is the sum of omega s and omega p, right? So obviously, at time t, if our omega vector is here, at t plus dt, very short time later, it will be somewhere here. So the sense, the, the sense of the acceleration will be changing tangentially to the, to the circle, right? So basically, as I said, why? Why it would be useful for you if you know the body cone and space cone? You know the right-hand rule, and that right-hand rule can help you to identify the sense of alpha acceleration. So, when we are talking about acceleration, did I show it already? No. Right. The acceleration can be calculated by cross product and this cross product actually formulated based on experimental observations okay 
So this capital omega is the rotation of the body or precession, as we discussed earlier. And omega is the angular velocity. So if you want to calculate the angular acceleration, you need to cross product delta, sorry, capital omega by total angular velocity. How we could observe this here? So by observation, if this length of this omega or magnitude is constant, it is not changing. As I said, you are just trying to see how this alpha is changing. So let's try to find what is alpha by simple cross product. You know that the change of the magnitude, sorry, of the direction will be tangent to the circle here. So how you will get that sense by right hand rule. So your thumb must be in line with alpha and your fingers should curl from the first vector to the second one. What is the first vector here? Omega P cross omega. You see? If your fingers, right hand fingers, curling from omega P towards omega, your thumb showing you the sense of angular acceleration. This is why we are formulating this alpha as capital omega cross product omega. It is just a kind of uh, customary thing in dynamics to show the precession with capital omega. Precession means that a body is rotating about. Precession is actually. So if this disk is rotating with omega s, if you let it go, if you let it free, then you will observe actually omega p occurs automatically or naturally. We are going to investigate this in much more detail, probably in the last week of this year. Again, this is called a gyroscopic effect, but at the moment, we don't need to go much more in detail. So far, we were talking about, so far we were talking about the velocity, angular velocity and acceleration of the rigid body. But what if we have a point on the rigid body? Now, this is quite simple at this moment. Again, because this is just some receiving some information from mechanics. So the velocity of any point can be given as omega cross product r. Again, this is quite a simple approach and formula that we already know. So if you know the velocity, you can go for acceleration, which is also quite easy. Is it there or here? Yeah. This, this depends on the right hand rule. So you need to identify the senses of rotation or motion with right hand rule. It is not just only clockwise or anticlockwise. Thank you for this question, it's quite important. And when I will be solving, working out the questions, I will make sure that you are also uh, using the principle, the right hand rule, to make sure that you are checking and giving the right senses to the motions. Uh, since it is time, I can just, I think, mention about one thing about uh, assessment one as well. It doesn't matter, like for a couple, of, for some years, not couple, five, six years, I'm teaching dynamics here, and after every online assessment one, I'm getting at least a couple emails from my students. I did everything correct, just just the sign was different and you didn't give me any mark. You will, you will not get any marks, guys, because if you, your answer is plus one, your body is here, minus one, it is here, right? Completely different and please, it is a quite insulting thing 
when you write I did everything correct and you know it is just minus sign you are not you will not get I what was the example gave you you don't about units the importance of units and everything gimli glider right so please check that and make sure that you are accounting calculating the senses the signs correctly because again imagine you did the same calculation because next year the other year you will be working imagine you are giving the excuse to your customer you will maybe like you know you will sign under projects you will get paid significantly or whatever you will get paid and you will be responsible for that if you cannot say sorry like you know your something collapsed or you crashed or broken down sorry it was just a simple sign mistake if it is excusable kind of then it is the same here guys okay so you need to uh, appreciate the importance of simple uh, mistakes right so this is also quite important thank you for the question it was quite good and velocity how did we go from velocity velocity to acceleration as you can see now we are not talking about angular velocity or angular acceleration right we are talking about v and a linear right because we are talking about a point now we are not talking about angular velocity and acceleration so the simple thing that you can tell is that actually this is velocity how you get acceleration you just <clears throat> take time derivative right so you need to apply chain rule here right so the time derivative of the first item alpha cross product the second one plus the first one itself cross product time derivative of the second one we already know that this is actually the same as this one right velocity itself so this is how we get velocity and acceleration of points on rotating bodies quite an important thing now we have our worked example one so i will try to work out as much as i can anyone has any a4 paper do you have an a4 paper no one okay. shortest distance thank you very much thanks and sorry for breaking So now it is our worked example one. Thank you. So arm OA is rotating about horizontal x axis the whole system is also rotating about the vertical z axis with the given rpm constant speeds so when you are reading please make sure that you are understanding correctly constant speed and so for the position shown we need to calculate the angular velocity and acceleration of the body and velocity and acceleration of point A probably better if I not start now because it's just one minute left so in our next lecture I will be starting with the uh, with the solution of fourth example one thank you for joining lecture today and you can keep the balloons thank you very much make sure that you are recycling the balloons
Geste de Uh, you will have two weeks, so in after two weeks, Thursday 6 p.m. again. It's just an MCQ. Yeah, but again, there will be uh, calculations as well. Just to understand about the two comments. So this is like the body I found this animation on YouTube, so whatever, like... Okay, yeah, so, but the space is open now, it's like, it's